Before we can write any PHP, we need to have the local development environment set up for it. Let's do that in this video and also talk a little bit about web servers because PHP mostly runs on the web server and it's a good idea to know what a web server is and how it works. When talking about a web server, it could either refer to a hardware or software or both hardware and software together. A web server on the hardware is just a computer that stores the web server software, source code and some other stuff. A web server can process incoming requests using different protocols. Typically it's the HTTP protocol, which is the protocol used by the browser to view the web pages. A web server can host either a single or multiple websites on the same server using the same resource. This is done by something called virtual hosts where the single web server is able to allocate and share resources across multiple websites. Here is a simple diagram of how the communication between the client and the server happens. When you visit the website, the browser will request for the file from the server, the web server will process this request and respond accordingly. If it cannot locate the file, then it will respond with the 404 status code. We can actually see this in action by visiting any website and opening developer tools to inspect the requests. You can either open dev tools by either right clicking on your mouse and then clicking on the inspect element or by hitting F12 on the keyboard. Let's refresh the page and see what happens. As you can see, the first request is what gets sent to the server and then it responds back with the HTML that then gets rendered on the screen. Don't worry about the other requests for now. Also don't worry if this is new to you or if it doesn't really make sense, you don't really need to worry about this too much at this stage of your learning. I just wanted to explain how it works and what web servers are so things make more sense when we're actually installing the necessary software to run the PHP. The two most common web servers are Apache and Nginx. They both have their pros and cons. I'm not going to get into much detail on which one is better or which one to choose because I don't want to overwhelm you with too much information. We'll be using the Apache for now because it comes with the software bundled in that we're going to be installing in this video. There are many different ways you could have PHP installed in your local environment. You might even have it installed on your OS. If you have PHP manually installed, you will need a local server either Apache or Nginx. You would need to install that manually yourself. Later, if you decided that you also needed a database, you would need to install that as well. This does not sound beginner friendly. You probably just want to get it installed as simply and as fast as possible. This is why all-in-one solutions like XAMPP, MAMP, and WAMP exist. They bundle in the web server, PHP, database, and some other useful tools and handle the configuration for you, which makes it very easy for beginners to get started with PHP. Some other better alternatives to XAMPP uh, to get a PHP environment set up are virtual machines or containers. I personally don't use XAMPP, I use Docker, and I will have a separate video about getting PHP environment set up using Docker. But don't worry about it right now, we are not going to be installing Docker uh, right now, we are going to be installing XAMPP. This simplicity though comes with a trade-off, and that is flexibility. One of those trade-offs is you cannot have multiple PHP versions installed at the same time out of the box. There are ways you could achieve this with XAMPP, but it's not simple and requires some work. You may also need a different version of the database per project, which goes back to the point one. It also becomes harder to manage and maintain multiple projects, especially when you're trying to upgrade your current PHP version. It is not suited for production due to its security, so I would not be advising using XAMPP for production. And because you would not use XAMPP in production, you would always have some sort of disconnect differences between your local setup and your production. These differences could be minor if you know what you're doing, or it could be major like a difference in PHP versions or the packages it's installed, for example, which could yield to issues like it works on my local machine, but it does not work in production. There is absolutely nothing wrong with using XAMPP for hobby projects or just playing around with PHP and getting it running as fast as possible. It is entirely up to you how you want to get your local environment set up or what tools you want to use. If you're a beginner, then I would suggest to stick with XAMPP for now and then look for alternatives once you're comfortable. So just go to the XAMPP website, download it and follow the instructions to install. On one of the steps, it will ask you what uh, services you want to include in the bundle. You could unsubscribe select the ones that you do not uh, care or you don't want to use. For this course though, we're only going to be using database and PHP, so we don't need all other services. So we could disable them for now. Let's start the control panel and briefly review it. Right away, as you can see, I'm getting an error. 
And this is actually a pretty common error for cases where you may already be running some other service on the same port. For example, in my case, I have a database running in a Docker container on the same port 3306. And because this port is already taken, XAMPP can start the database service. This can easily be fixed by turning off the service that's currently running on port 3306, or we could use a different port to run it. Same thing can happen for Apache, for example. So if you see such errors, just check what services are using that port and either disable or change them. We won't be needing the database right now, so we can ignore this error for now and fix it once we actually start using the database. You could also change the XAMPP configuration. You could change the default uh, text editor, or you could enable some of the services to start automatically whenever the XAMPP starts. You could also stop and start the necessary services from the control panel, view and edit configuration files, and check logs. Don't worry about the config files for now, we'll touch on that topic in a separate video. Let's head over to the browser and type HTTP localhost and hit enter. It opens the welcome dashboard page for XAMPP, which means that the web server is working as expected. You might be wondering where you would put your source code, and that depends mainly on how the web server is configured. So let's open XAMPP control panel and click on the explorer button here. This opens the directory where XAMPP is installed. And here we see that that's where Apache, PHP, MySQL and other services are installed. But you don't have to worry about these directories for now. The only thing that you need to know is that hcdocs right here, this is your document root, which means that this is where your source code and project files will go to. If we open that, we see that this is the source code for this dashboard page that we see on the local host. So we could go ahead and delete this because we're going to be adding our own files. Now what happens when you go to localhost is that it will try to locate index.php within your document root. If it finds the index.php then it will serve the website using that index.php. If it cannot find the index.php then it will just list the files and directories within the document root. So for example right now we don't have any content. If I were to create just some uh, file here and go to localhost we see that it just lists the document tree. So what we can do is we can create directories here. So we can call this program with geo. And here we could create an index.php. And we could just say hello world for now. Now a quick note here, we're not writing a PHP code yet. This is just a simple uh, text. So if we go to the local host, now we see the program with geo directory. If we click that, we see hello world. As you noticed, we have not written a PHP code yet. We'll do that on the next video where we'll go over the basic syntax. Before we can do that though, we need a code editor because even though you could write PHP in Notepad, it's not so pleasant to work with. There are a lot of options when it comes to code editors. Try some of them and pick the one that you like and feel more comfortable with. Sublime Text, Atom, VS Code, and PHP Storm are the ones that I recommend, though it's up to you what you use. This is it for this video. Now you know how to get up and running with PHP on your local environment using XAMPP. But in addition to that, you also know what web server is and how it works. Thank you for watching. Hope you liked this video. Please hit like and subscribe and I will see you on the next one where we'll go over the syntax and write our first PHP code.